welcome back to Mushroom Adventures. Okay, in this episode, we're going to talk about solving these heat issues that I'm having. Because if you're using these cottonseed hulls, you're going to eventually have the same problems as I am. Which, if you remember, it's low amount of fruiting, getting a lot of this weird uh, outgrowth that looks cool and neat, but it doesn't really go anywhere. You can see actually there's some half-assed mushrooms here. And it's uh, making some really big monster mushrooms, which I've, I've learned now that when they get that big, you can only even eat them really about one quarter of the bottom has to be cut off because it's too tough to eat. So uh, my restaurants were complaining about that, so I had to give a little bit of credit. So we're going to solve these heat issues by pressing out the water. I'm going to talk about this press and how it's made and uh, get some mushrooms going because this area should be just blooming with them. But you can see it's a lot of logs just waiting to fruit, partially fruiting, only fruiting off the ends. It's kind of a sad situation at the moment, but you know I'll work on it. So here is my hopeful solution. This is the press I've built. You can see I've made it with uh, some 4x4s, some womanized lumber is actually what it is, pressure treated lumber, which you can find in the, uh, the deck section for building decks and whatnot at your home improvement store. And you see I've assembled it with some long screws, give it some stability. It also has some caster wheels on the bottom so I can roll around once it's on flat ground. And to slide into it is this piece right here. And what it will do is it will slide in the center here and you can see I have holes drilled for these bolts to anchor it on there. And once that's anchored, you'll give it a place on the bottom here you can see for the uh, jack to press against and the jack will push down into the barrel with our plunger piece you see here here's the bottle jack I just kind of have it supported with a couple of other pieces of wood hold it in there some more uh, womanized lumber that I've actually just got one plank of it and chopped it up into uh, five sections and arranged three and two on top of that drilled it all together then uh, measured the diameter of the uh, opening of the barrel used a, a marker with some string and get the radius and you can just easily draw you know the, the circle that you want to cut out and so now that'll be the perfect plunger that we are going to use to get in this barrel right here you can see it all fit in there perfectly so I'm going to go ahead and paint all these pieces because they've been in my barn for a while, for a while. actually I got to reuse a lot of lumber so that's great I'm going to paint them to protect them so they don't have any excess dirt and junk because you know our pasteurized substrate is going to be right here underneath it all and let's uh, we'll see what it looks like when I get it all done So I'm really excited about this. You see that I have it completely painted. Probably could have used some better uh, quality paint than just spray paint for the orange, but I was just using up whatever I had left. And then for the white, I just used primer. But uh, primer for the entire thing would be just fine. And I painted the paddle as well, top and bottom. And what I'm going to do is put a layer of trash bag in between the cottonseed hulls and the paddles so that'll keep it a little bit more sanitary too because I do know there's some cracks in there that might have some junk but I, I've hosed everything off real strong so you see also too I have drilled holes in the bottom of this I've cleaned this barrel up considerably well I used some soap and a scour pad initially to get all the junk off then uh, some bleach cleaner to uh, sanitize it and so my batch of hauls is ready to be dumped out. And uh, let's see this thing in action. 
I have my barrel filled up with the hulls that I've drained somewhat out of this, you know. And you can tell they're dripping a little bit from the bottom. So, I'm gonna set this trash bag clean side down. Take my plunger. Alright, that fits in there nicely. See, I, I measured it perfectly, didn't I? Alright, now I'm going to first use a cordless drill. I'm going to use a good four, or 20 volt cordless drill with just a uh, wide uh, slot bit to uh, jack this jack up. And if it's too weak, I'm going to switch to a corded drill. Oh, look at that go, it's going down. That's getting tough too. Well, it's definitely squeezing it out. Looks like I gotta get the other drill to get all the way out though. Alright, uh, it took me about five minutes to find my drill and the bit to change it. So, uh, see, even though I got it not all the way down, it's still pressing out pretty good. So let's go ahead and extend this out all the way. Ooh. I think that might be all the way. Well, I think what I'll probably have to do... Well, let's see. All right, I'll leave it that, let it squeeze out. I'll let it press out for about 10 minutes and I'll get a lot of, a lot of excess water out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another set of holes right here so I can drop this one level. So once, you know, it's get fully extended, I can bring this piston down and uh, slide this whole rack down one and then press it down even more. But I think this will probably be sufficient as long as I just let it, uh, squeeze out and drip out at the bottom for about 10 minutes to get it really good and drain. And then I uh, will take it out, let it cool, and see what it looks like out on the table. Okay, I've emptied out the cottonseed hulls. And you see they fluffed up to the same volume since I forked them out of there. That they, uh, same volume that they normally would be, not too compressed. But they are considerably considerably drier. Here's uh, the hauls I took off the top. You can see I can squeeze it hard as I can. Nothing drips out. Now, normally that would not be what you want because you would want a little bit of uh, water to come out, a few drips, then to stop. Now that's what you would call field capacity. But in my case, we're going to leave it on the dry side because we really need to uh, do so so it doesn't become a problem with contamination. And if it gets to the point that I see that when it finishes colonizing that it looks like it could use more water, like it's putting off less of a flush than it would, then I might actually dunk the logs before they flush uh, in like a, a bucket of, or something larger container of water for a few hours to let them rehydrate. And I've done that before and it works. Um, but I still think this will probably be adequate. Now the holes that I scraped off the uh, bottom of the uh, the uh, barrel, they are still a little bit moist. You can see here, squeeze it hard. Ooh, it's hot. And there's that quick little stream of water by a few little drips, then nothing. So that's actually ideal, but as you can see there is a uh, no water coming out the bottom of these bins like there normally would be. So it's going to sit down here for three hours and it'll probably actually cool faster now that I have less water in it. So I might come down here in about two hours to see how cool it is. But 
whatever the the wetter bottom part that I took out hopefully it'll dry out even more and we'll have a really good composition to, to uh, make logs with so I'm gonna have to make some logs I'm gonna have to see how things go and uh, give you an update okay I'm gonna do another batch and this time you see I've drilled some extra holes in these posts so I can drop it down further. The last batch was good in the sense that it pressed out a lot of the holes that are towards the top, but the ones that were towards the very bottom of the barrel were still a little bit damp. And so I'm going to get them to the point where there's not even dampness in those. Plus also too, when I take the holes out this time, instead of taking the first half and putting it right on the table, and then the second half into the uh, bins, I'm going to try to uh, spread it out some, you know, a little here on the table, a little on the bins. That way it's a little bit more homogenous and uh, one of the logs isn't a lot wetter than the other. So let's see what happens now. Okay. All right, here we go. Well, see, now I had a little bit more hauls in this batch, so it's having a lot more difficulty even on the first setting, so might not even have to go down. Yeah, it's having a hard time trying to press even more. Maybe I should let it drip a little bit, and then uh, I'll come back to it and screw it even more. I'll let it drip for uh, about two, three minutes. Let's see if I can get it down any farther now. I think I'm going to have to buy a, uh, a better drill. What do you think? Yeah, it's going to burn my drill. I'm trying to get any more than that. Um, I don't know. I think I might be able to get down to the next level. Let's see. Well, no, I can actually look at it right now and tell it's not going to happen on this batch. Probably in the last batch where I had a little bit less holes in there. So, if it was a smaller batch, I would uh, go ahead and do a double squish on it. But I think this batch is large enough that uh, the one the one bar is really high pressure is going to be enough to push enough out. So, I'm going to go ahead, put it back up, and let it uh, drain out again. Let it drain out again for 10 minutes and uh, make sure I mix it up, and that should be pretty darn good. So I figured out the best course of action is to take out half of the hulls, and then go down one notch and squeeze the other half out, as you see. And it's a little cattywampus in there, but I, because I didn't, I didn't level it out at the bottom as good as I should have, but it's still working. And it's still pressing out water, so this will give the same effect to the bottom half of it as the uh, top got so I'm pretty sure now everything is going to be uh, very good on the dry side and not have any dripping or any kind of uh, excess water when you squeeze it out so I think that will solve it alright let's take a look later down the road and see what we got <laughs> 